Good morning, everyone. Morning, Kay. Amanda, Trisha, Jim. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Kay. This morning, hope everybody's doing well. Good morning, Marianne. Just give it a little bit of time here. Good morning, Lois. Good morning, Verita. Well, let's go ahead and get started. Good morning to everyone, and I'm Kevin McCoy, and attend the Episcopal Church of the Epiphany with my wife, Mabel. Happy to be with you during this Tuesday morning prayer. Let's go ahead and get started in the Book of Common Prayer on page 75. In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Now let us turn to page 79. And let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was is now and will be forever. Amen. Our King and Savior now draws near. Come, let us adore him. And now turn, turning to page 82, let us read together the Jubilate. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures 
from age to age. Now for psalm reading, turn to Psalm 66. That starts on page 673 in the Book of Common Prayer. We'll read Psalm 66 and 67 responsively by whole verse. Be joyful in God, all you lands. Sing the glory of his name. Sing the glory of his praise. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. Because your enemies cringe before you. All the earth bows down before you, sings to you, sings out your name. Come now and see the works of God. How wonderful he is doing toward all his people. He turned the sea into dry land so that they went through the water on foot, and there we rejoiced in him. In his might he rules forever. His eyes keep watch over the nations. Let no rebel rise up against him. Bless our God, you peoples. Make the voice of his praise to you, who holds our souls in life and will not allow our feet to slip. For you, O God, have proved us. You have tried us just as silver is tried. You brought us into the snare. You laid heavy burdens upon our backs. You led enemies right over our heads. We went through fire and water, but you brought us out into a place of refreshment. I will enter your house with burnt offerings and will pay you my vows, which I promised with my lips and spoke with my mouth when I was in trouble. I will offer you sacrifices of fat beasts with the smoke of rams. I will give you oxen and goats. Come and listen, all you who fear God, and I will tell you what he has done for me. I called out to him with my mouth, and his praise was on my tongue. If I had found evil in my heart, the Lord would not have heard me. But in truth, God has heard me. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. Who has not rejected my prayer, nor withheld his love from me. May God be merciful to us and bless us. Show us the light of his countenance and come to us. Let your ways be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let the people praise you, O God. Let the peoples praise you. Be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide all the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let the peoples praise you. The earth has brought forth her increase. May God, our own God, give us his blessing. May God give us his blessing. And may the earth stand in awe of him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. For our ultimate return to the book of Isaiah. 11. Isaiah 11, and we'll read verses 10 through 16. On that day the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nations shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. On that day the Lord will extend his hand yet a second time to recover the remnant of that is left of his people from Assyria, from Egypt, from Paphos, from Ethiopia, from Elam, from Shinar, from Hamath, and from the coastlands of the sea. He will raise a signal for the nations and will assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. The jealousy of Ephraim shall depart, the hostility of Judah Ephraim shall not be jealous of Judah, and Judah shall not be hostile toward Ephraim. But they shall swoop down on the backs of the Philistines in the west. Together they shall plunder the peoples of the east. They shall put forth their hand against Edom and Moab, and the Ammonites shall obey them. And the Lord will utterly destroy the tongue of the sea of Egypt, and will wave his hand over the river with his scorching wind 
and will split it into seven channels and make a way to cross on foot. So there shall be a highway from the remnant that is left of his people as there was for Israel when they came up from the land of Egypt. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now turning to page 90. In your book of common prayer, let us together say Canticle 13, a song of praise. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple. On the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you beholding the depths in the heart. Glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Now for a New Testament reading, turn to the book of Revelation, chapter 20, Revelation 20, 11 through 21, 8. Then I saw a great white throne, and the one who the earth and the heaven fled from his presence, and no place was found for them. And I saw the dead great and small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. Also another book was opened, the book of life, and the dead were judged according to their works, as recorded in the books. And the sea gave up the dead that were in it. Death and Hades gave up the dead that were in them, and all were judged according to what they had done. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death the lake of fire, and anyone whose name was not found written in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, for I had adorned for her husband, and I heard a loud voice. From the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them, will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who is seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Those who conquer will inherit these things, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. But as for the cowardly, the faithless, the polluted, the murderers, the fornicators, the sorcerers, the idolaters, and all liars, their place will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'll turn to page 93, and let us say together Canticle 8. A song to the Lamb. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain, for with your blood you have redeemed for God from every family, language, people, and nation a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne and to Christ the Lamb, 
be worship and praise, dominion and splendor, forever and forevermore. For God, to the book of Luke, chapter 1, and we will read verses 5 through 25. In the days of King Herod of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah, priestly order of Abia. His wife was a descendant of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Both of them were righteous before God, living blamelessly according to all the commandments and regulations of the Lord. But they had no children, because Elizabeth was barren, and both were getting on in years. Once, when he was serving as priest before God, and his section was on duty, he was chosen by lot, according to the custom of the priesthood, to enter the sanctuary of the Lord and offer incense. Now, at the time of the incense offering, the whole assembly of the people was praying outside. Then there appeared to him an angel of the Lord, standing at the right hand of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was terrified, and fear overwhelmed him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you will call him John. You will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He must never drink wine or strong drink. Even before his birth, he will be filled with the Holy Spirit. He will turn many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. With the spirit and power of Elijah, he will go before him to turn the hearts of the parents to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah said to the angel, How will I know that this is so? For I am an old man, and my wife is getting on in years. The angel replied, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and bring you this good news. But now, because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their time, you will become mute, unable to speak, until the day that these things occur. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and wondered at his delay at the sanctuary. When he did come out, he could not speak to them, and they realized that he had seen a vision in the sanctuary. He kept motioning to them and remained unable to speak. When the time of service had ended, he went home to his house. After these days, his wife Elizabeth conceived, and for five months she remained in seclusion. She said, This is what the Lord has done for me when he looked favorably on me and took away the disgrace I have endured among my people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> now let's turn to page 96 and together let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now I'd just like to remind you all to post any prayers you have today in the comment section, and we'll get to those shortly. Let's continue on page 97. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. 
Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now turning the page. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. Now a collect for this fourth week of Advent is on page 202. Purify our conscience, Almighty God, by your daily visitation, that your Son, Jesus Christ, at his coming, may find in us a mansion prepared for himself, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A collect for peace. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you as eternal life, and to serve you as perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now a prayer of mission. O oh God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold, pour out your spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now join with me in prayer 35 on page 826. For the poor and neglected. Almighty and most merciful God, we remember before you all poor and neglected persons whom it would be easy for us to forget, the homeless and the destitute, the old and the sick, and all who have none to care for them. Help us to heal those who are broken in body or spirit, and to turn their sorrow into joy. Grant this, Father, for the love of your Son, who for our sake became poor. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, we're just so thankful that we can gather together <clears throat> in prayer this morning on this beautiful day. Thank you for all of our daily provisions. Lord, thank you for even the trials that beset us and for the blessing and guidance and the perseverance through these trials that you give us. Lord, we pray for this whole world and for this terrible scourge and plague that's going around. We thank you that you have provided means for vaccinations to go out. Pray that you would uh, provide these to all the peoples and nations of the world. Lord, we pray for our families, uh, for our communities, our parish, Lord, and um, we lift up especially for healing, for Gloria, and we lift up those in Honduras and Central America, especially those missions that we have been doing in that region. We pray for all patients and healthcare workers and doctors and nurses at this time, especially when the hospitals are becoming full and all the healthcare workers at various levels are tired and working long hours. We pray for them to persevere and keep them healthy throughout this time. We pray for the 
new Christian youth in Dee's village in Cambodia. And they were being persecuted for their faith and being threatened by their parents to withdraw their support for their education. Pray, Lord, we pray that you will intervene and soften the hearts of their families toward you and provide for their support for their education. We pray that their families will come to the Christmas celebration and be touched by this message of love and peace. Again, we pray for the manufacture, distribution, and administration of the COVID vaccines to help eradicate this disease. And now at this time, we pray that we would reflect on this past year and all the things that you, Lord, have taught us. Pray that we'll listen to the voice of your Holy Spirit in the new year and be determined to repent of our ways and pursue your will to love and extend the kingdom of Jesus. Lord, we continue to pray for our schools and educators administrators, teachers, parents, all the support staff, and the students, whether they're in class, whether they are doing online instruction or homeschool, and pray that, that this semester, this time, would end well for all of them and that you prepare a good beginning in the new year for them. Lord, pray for all those who are in long-term care facilities, assisted living centers, praying especially for Twin Peaks, uh, Twin Rivers, where my wife Mabel works, and ask that you would um, provide them special care at this time while they are waiting the vaccine to be delivered there as well. And Lord, ask that you would do all these things, Lord, and we ask all these things in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now let's turn to page 101. And before we do that, let me add a couple of prayers. A prayer, Lord, we pray for the salvation of Allison and for the healing of her back and also prayers for the healing of Reese, who injured her knee during soccer. Pray for good recovery from this and rehab. And now let's turn to page 101 and offer the general thanksgiving together. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. And now a prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you, and you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions, as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So it's been a pleasure to be with you again this Tuesday and just uh, remind you that we have daily morning prayer at 8 a.m., evening compline at 8 p.m., 
noonday prayer at 1210 every day except Sundays. Also, please check your e-news and the church website for our Christmas services on Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, and of course our regular services on Saturday and Sunday. And I wish that you would all just have a blessed Christmas and look forward to being with you next time. Merry Christmas, all of you.